to graphic technology we have gone through already, including the symmetric and asymmetric algorithms, hashes, digital signatures, message authentication codes to make a working security protocol. SSL and TLS are cryptographic protocols designed to provide communication security over a network or the internet. Now, SSL is the older encryption protocol and TLS is the new one, but people still call them both SSL, which is a little bit annoying and misleading. Many sites still use the older SSL for compatibility reasons though, even though it has security issues. An example of TLS use is when you see HTTPS in the URL of a website, such as here. But TLS can be used with any other protocol like FTP or virtual private networks. It isn't just used with HTTP and for web browsing. TLS is very important for internet security and privacy because it is the most used method of encrypting data on the internet. TLS provides privacy because it encrypts the data and data integrity because it uses message authentication codes or MACs when communicating between two applications. So for example, when your web browser, the application, communicates with your online bank, their application, the communication is encrypted from end to end from your application to their application using TLS. TLS supports the security services of confidentiality or privacy, authentication and integrity. The connection is private because a symmetric algorithm such as AES, which we've discussed, is used to encrypt the data transmitted. The keys for this symmetric encryption are generated uniquely for each connection and are based on a secret negotiated at the start of the session. The server and client negotiate the details of which encryption algorithm and cryptographic keys to use before the first byte of data is transmitted. The negotiation of a shared secret cannot be read by eavesdroppers, even by an attacker who places himself in the middle of the connection. The connection is also reliable in that no attacker can modify the communication during the negotiation without being detected. The identity of the communicating parties can be authenticated using public key cryptography, certificates and digital signatures. This authentication can be made optional, but is generally required for at least one of the parties, usually the server, so the websites you visit. And I'll show more on this when we talk about certificates. The connection is reliable because each message transmitted includes a message integrity check using a message authentication code or MAC to prevent undetected loss or alteration of the data during transmission. TLS supports many different methods for exchanging keys, encrypting data and authenticating message integrity, many of the algorithms and technologies which we've already discussed. As a result though, secure configuration of TLS involves many configurable parameters and not all choices provide the security services of privacy, authentication and integrity. Now if we look on the Wikipedia site for transport layer security, which is actually a brilliant site for describing TLS, we can see the various different supported methods for exchanging keys, encrypting data and authenticating message integrity. And the first one here is, is showing us authentication and exchanging of keys and the various different algorithms that are supported. Now, if you remember back to the asymmetric algorithms that we discussed, that's these. So we can see RSA, we can see Diffie-Hellman, RSA, elliptical curve, etc. Now, the best ones to use are this one, this one, and this one. But the problem is you don't always get a choice. A server will support certain authentication and key agreement methods. And if you want to speak to them, then you'll have to use those. Now, the reason that these are the preferred option is because they're using Diffie-Hellman for key exchange, which can ensure a property of privacy called forward secrecy, which you can see here. Now this property gives assurance your session keys 
will not be compromised even if the private key of the server is compromised. By generating a unique session key for every session a user initiates, even the compromise of a single session key will not affect any data other than that exchanged in that specific session, protected by that particular key. Perfect forward secrecy represents a big step forward in protecting data on the transport layer and has become to see more important since vulnerabilities such as heart bleed. So perfect forward secrecy really means that if the server you're communicating with is compromised and their private key is compromised, it means that all of your previous conversations cannot be decrypted because you're using Diffie-Hellman to negotiate session keys that are only used for a very short time. If we move further down on here, we can then see the symmetric algorithms that are used. So when we're talking about session keys, these are the keys that are actually used to encrypt the data because the symmetric keys are quicker. And remember we talked about AES and how AES was a good option. And here we can see AES and various other types of symmetric encryption algorithms. And this interestingly shows us which ones are secure and which ones are insecure. That'll be because there's some sort of vulnerability or weakness against them which is another reason why I recommended AES. You'll notice here that there are some other things at the end of this AES. You shouldn't really worry too much about that. That is called a mode of operation. It is a different way for AES to scramble or encrypt the data, which doesn't really matter too much in this case and for this course. Just knowing that you're using AES is enough and the bit length, which we've already explained. You can also see here, it illustrates the different versions of SSL. So actually, and this is very confusing for a lot of people, this is the first version or earliest version that it's showing here of SSL. And this is the next one. And then this is the next one. So it goes to one after it was at three for SSL. So TLS 1.3 is the latest and most secure version but is the least compatible with browsers. So when using TLS, you really want to be on TLS one or above. And as you can see here, you, you can see which one of these is secure or not secure. And you can see here, even with AES, you've got depends on mitigations if you're using TLS one. Let's come down a little bit further. And you can see the hashes and Macs that are used in order to maintain data integrity. MD5 shouldn't be used. SHA-1 is definitely getting very old and we should be starting to use the later versions of SHA, which is 256 and 384. But for compatibility reasons, these aren't necessarily used. Attempts have been made to compromise and subvert aspects of the security that TLS and the protocol has been revised several times to address these evolving security threats and identified weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Examples of these include Beast, Crime, Poodle, Logjam, all with interesting names. You can Google those and find out more details if you're interested. But the result has been that browsers and the server implementations of SSL have had to be upgraded by the developers in order to keep up with the attacks and to defend against these vulnerabilities. Now, if we go here, here you can see listed the versions of Firefox. This is Firefox 27 to 33. And you can see the beast, vulnerability, crime, poodle, freak, logjam. And you can see if you've got version 36 to 38, then you, then that is vulnerable to logjam. And if you get older and older versions, you'll see that they become more and more susceptible to various weaknesses and vulnerabilities, which is why you should be on the latest version of your browser where possible. And the servers or sites that you connect to also need to be on the latest versions. Now the thing is you can't necessarily control that, but the thing is if you need 
privacy, you need extreme privacy, and you know that your server is not supporting or is vulnerable to some of these things because maybe it's using just SSL one, then you know that you can't communicate with that, not in a secure and private way. The combination of algorithms used is known as a cipher suite. It is useful to know what are both the strongest and most compatible cipher suites. So instead of giving you a list, I'm going to point you at resources that you can use instead. This way you can find the latest cipher list to be considered the most secure and compatible when you need it. This is because if I give you a list now, tomorrow a new vulnerability could come out, which would invalidate the order. Probably one of the best places to go for a good cipher suite with compatibility, well actually the best place I know of anyway, is uh, mozilla.org, uh, the people behind Firefox. Now what you can see here is the cipher suite list in order of preference. So here is the most desirable and here is the least desirable but still strong plus you have all of the best options as well such as your TLS version your certificate type your certificate signature etc and if you go up here you can see what these ciphers are compatible with so these are the oldest compatible clients that will work with these ciphers so that's a really great list of the strongest ciphers the ones that you want to use in preference and also if we go further down here we have a list designed for increased compatibility so if you're looking for a list that will work with a wider number of clients uh, then this is a good option here if we go further down there you go they they see all the ciphers if we go further down we can see like the ultimate compatibility list here which will work with the really older clients if you need to configure a server then check this out this is a really cool tool so if we select the type of server that we want and then we can so, so set the server here so maybe it's apache maybe we want the old version the intermediate version the modern version and then it produces the configuration for us so we can see here it's uh, set it all up for us we don't want ssl v3 uh, v2 um, or v1.1 so it's going to work for 1.2 and there's all the uh, cipher suites so it's created that config for us so yeah so it's, it's really brilliant another site to look at for a good cipher suite list is uh, weakdh.org there's one here and another one that i recommend uh, from steve gibson this is his list and it's uh, in the format suitable for windows servers this is uh, also another good list of uh, preferred order for your cipher suites. And in the next section is I'm going to show you how you can tell what it is that the server is offering in terms of its encryption algorithms and hashes and digital signatures, etc.